Of course, that was Kiss Dino Shuperu. Uh, for your list and viewership delight, of course, you are watching the Saturday Breakfast on TVC. I am Theophilus Ilama. Of course, uh, that interview segment with Adi Banke will be uploaded very soon on YouTube so you can watch the full uh, interview. Welcome once again to the most interesting part of the morning show. You're still watching the Saturday Breakfast here on TVC, and here is uh, this is the entertainment segment. I am Theophilus Ilama. And we have an awesome time planned for you. The talented Shun Kuti is here with us to discuss the issues in the music industry, the controversy surrounding the death of Mubad, and also some of the intrigues, the issues he has experienced in his music career. And we'll also touch, about, touch on the collaboration that's coming up very soon. And of course, it is close to a month since promise Aloba Ilerio Loa died, and many events have, uh, regarding the incident have taken place. For example... Naramali and Sam Larry have been remanded in prison for 21 days by the court. Sean Kuti, a talented Nigerian singer and musician, joins us today to discuss this and more. Thank you very much for coming on the program. Uh, thank you very much for having me. Okay, first of all, let me have your reaction to the issues happening now in the industry. Of course, Sam Larry has been, is, in, is in prison custody. Same with Naramali and some other um, key individuals in this case in the death of Mubad. Uh, well, uh, but. In the bigger picture of uh, what's going on in our country in general, you know, um, what is a bit alarming is to see people kind of celebrating this as some kind of victory. You know, mm. uh, the loss of Mobad is a tragedy. And to see even more about talented young people who might lose their career. Mm or even their livelihood, and maybe even their life, if they are guilty of this crime, is a tragedy for our nation in, in general. You know, that we have sunk into a place where, you know, we have become American-style gangsters, mm. and we are losing talented people, violence, and unnecessary deaths, you know, in general. If we follow what the police have said yesterday, that the nurse is a prime has, suspect. has admitted, mm -hmm. you know, so, except I'm being told that Naira paid the nurse to do the job, <laughs> you know, <laughs> what, are we, what, are, what, are we, what are we really doing? Mm. You know, so, I mean, it's a tragedy either way, any way you look at it, from all the sides, all the angles, is, is the failure of our society, is the failure of the elders. Mm. You know, and that's one thing we don't discuss in this country. The fact that because the elders and the professionals. We too are also the elders now. I'm 40, you know? And because we refuse to be responsible, to really be responsible for the future generations, the ones before us, it is important that we understand that even my dad fell out. Well, my father never had to tell me something twice. Why? Because he lived that example. Everything he asked of us, he lived it. You understand? So we as elders refusing to grow up, we are now behaving like young people so that we are, in a way, validating their behavior mm -hmm. because we are refusing to correct the, or maybe we are cowards. We don't want to confront our own younger brothers and sisters, okay. you know, to make them better people. And the best way to do that is for us to become better people. And since we are refusing to take that step, we want to start keep acting like children in the club all day, doing the same dance young people are mm -hmm. doing. You know, so we are dropping the ball and we are failing them. And in that aspect, more, how would I say, maybe evil people are taking advantage of that and beginning to inspire people, our young ones, in a negative way. But is it, is it about what the elder ones, the elderly ones have not done? Or is it also about the younger ones not listening? No, no. There's no way uh, younger ones will not listen. Because every young person in this world looks up to an adult. We are all their mentors, one way or the other. You might not be the mentor of your younger brother in the house or your children, but trust me, there's an older person outside that yeah. they give that respect to and that regard. You know, and in a way, maybe they choose that person because you also in the house, you defer your power to that person. Okay. By the way you act, the way you talk about that person, you two are looking up to that person as well. So we must really look at the big picture here and see that society, we need to do more. You know, if you remember very well, Doen College, the Doen College issue yes. is all around the same cultism talk. And instead of Nigerians who 
face that cultism head on. We say, okay, we want to eradicate cultism from our society so that young people are no longer oppressed by these violent gangs and once and for all put a stop to it. Mm -hmm. You know, they started blaming the two 40-year-old boys. Oh, take them to jail, kill them, murder them. Yeah. Yeah. When we start, you know, really, really becoming that punitive to our youth, you know, to the young people of our society, instead of us to change society, then there's something we don't want to accept that society is failing. You know, many of us want to keep our society this way because they've told us in church or in the mosque, that we are special too. And very soon our blessing is coming. Which blessing which simply means it's your turn to play the game. Mm. You know, so maybe we don't want society to change. But society must change, or else things like this, and even worse, will continue to happen. So the death of Mubada has thrown up a lot of issues in the industry so far. First is the fact that a lot of these youngsters get a contract because they are hungry. They just sign away their their life without even reading the dotted lines. Yeah, everybody, well, it's not only a Nigerian thing, you know, people being taken advantage of in the music industry, you know, that's, that's, that has always been. But you know, why is it so? Because record companies are greedy. <laughs> if you think it's only Malian Records that does it, then please, you don't understand what's going on in this no, world. No, 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 we're not saying it's only Malian Universal, Records. Universal, as big okay. as they are, Sony Music, if you know Michael Jackson's story with them, you know, my father has fights with all his record label. My last record label, I mean, till now, I've not seen the account of my, of Black Times record we are fighting over that. This happens everywhere in the world. You know, you, no matter, even when you have the best lawyer, record companies want to trick you, they want to cheat mm. you, they want to steal from you. Because that's what capitalists do. You know, they take advantage, they exploit, they extract. Mm -hmm. You know, um... Yes, we need stronger laws in the Nigerian music industry. Definitely, we need stronger laws. I, personally, for one, do not see the reason why Nigerian record companies should copy American record companies and the way they behave. Just because they do it doesn't mean we should do it too, but uh -huh. that's how business, business is. But we as musicians, we need to come together and find a way to make the laws governing our, music, our business transactions uh, better. That's mm -hmm. for sure. What kind of laws? I mean, from copyright laws, mm -hmm. you know, to uh, uh, um, what is the word I'm looking for here? Uh, yeah, copyright, all kinds of rights from your copyright, mechanical right laws, and also the enforcement of those laws. In the Nigerian book, uh, laws, there are a bit of protection for us, but there's no enforcement. You know, there's no enforcement, and even when you try to enforce it, it is easy for those that you are trying to bring to justice to, you know, as Nigeria is to corrupt the, the, wheels, of, <laughs> the wheels of justice. Mm -hmm. So, they are, they are, I mean, at the core of it, as I said, it's a societal issue that we as Nigerians must come together to decide that we really want our society to move forward, not this uh, uh, selective outrage that we always, that we always uh, exhibit here. Because this is going on constantly. Even since then, more violence has happened to more young people you know, in the, in the name of this cultism, mm. you know. So these are the things that we need to look at holistically, you know, so that tragedies like this don't continue to occur. So as, as someone who has been in the industry for, for, for quite a long time, how has all of this affected the this, this sector so far? Well, I hope it's, it's going to make things better. I hope, but I know that it will not, you know. Why? That it will happen, it will come, and it will go. Like, so, I mean... That, it has, that Green's death, you know, for example, at, at that moment, everybody thought, oh, it was going to bring about some change in the industry and mm -hmm. things like that. But no, it, it, that didn't happen. You know, and I think the larger, the big question we should actually also raise that Mubad's death has raised is the failing of the Nigerian healthcare system. You know, that we have nurses that go and give people injections in their house without proper diagnostics mm -hmm. being run, without proper tests being run. You know, these corners that we cut and mm -hmm. things that we allow to happen to us, you know, I think we remove ourselves from our humanity when we think these things are not important. I think Mubad's death, you know, more than anything, shows the failings of our healthcare system and the healthcare system. I mean, the police itself said the nurse says the injection she gave him, this is because proper tests were not run. Mm. And that we even have nurses that will leave the hospital and go and meet somebody at home just to give you injection. <laughs> 
you know, I don't understand if there's an emergency. I, I tell my friends, it's not as if Lagosians or Nigerian boys, we don't have a... a Immunity a, or no, something, no, a sickness. Uh, no, brave <coughs> to do all these stunts American mm -hmm. children do on TV. But no ambulance for Lagos. In Europe and America, when you are using your skateboard or you are jumping from high place, you fall down, you break your hand, bah! In less than five minutes, ambulance has come. They carry you to hospital. They give you morphine. The pain has gone. And you quickly go and do the same thing again next week when you come out of the hospital. But in Nigeria, when you jump and you fall down, your heart look pain. <laughs> it is the people around you that will have to carry All the time you are carrying to the hospital, you'll be feeling that pain. So we don't want, you know, so everybody keep your skateboard. We keep our distance. Not because we don't want to do it. <laughs> but... So these are the these are I mean in, these are the things we have to discuss in general, you know, how do we bring our healthcare system up to the standard where it is fit for human beings, mm -hmm. you know, not we are living in a situation where animal pets in Europe and America get better healthcare than us as human beings in Nigeria. I mean, we and in Africa as a whole. So things like this are the things that this situation should raise. We shouldn't be really rejoicing, you know, that our society has failed more young people both the perpetrator of, you know, the alleged perpetrator of the crime, from the nurse to the samlari to the friends, you know, and the victim himself, but mm -hmm. they are all uh, victims of the feelings of the society, you know, and we as a whole, to prevent this kind of thing from happening, if we really, if we really care, you know, we must look at it holistically and demand holistic change, not just punishment. When we are just looking for punishment, it looks like we are just being punitive, you know, and looking for a scapegoat. You understand? Yeah. While we keep the same uh, situation in place that we create the same tragedy over and over again. So we should think Mobadi is special enough for us to say his sacrifice of his life, you know, to be the blood that washes away certain sins from this society that they never come back again. Mm. You know, else we are just wasting time. Okay, so another issue that I would like you to talk about is about the fact that, are you concerned about the fact that like, we have Nigerian artists here being signed to record labels and suddenly uh, moved to another record label abroad and they suddenly forget the fact that they, are, they, they, they have Nigerian audiences? Uh, but, uh, well, some of us are pushed that way. Mm. Me, for example, you know, uh, I, I really have to look abroad for work. I really, really have to look abroad for work. Is it because of your kind of music? Uh, well, I don't know what it is. Maybe it's appreciated there than here. Well, I think I don't know what that means. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. I think what I think everything in this world is about uh, being a part of a narrative. If you if you fit into the narrative of any society, then probably there will be room for you, you know. But when you don't, or for some reason you are excluded, you know, uh, I think that is the situation anywhere. Mm. I don't think human beings have different listening. If Europeans and Americans and Asians and Brazilians can enjoy the music I make and Japanese people, how come I, what do you mean is more appreciated? I think it's just a narrative issue, you know? So I, I think and contract, we have to understand, this is 2023, contract is not slavery. Mm. You know, I, I've signed a contract with you as a musician. Yes, that's cool. But at the same time, if I don't feel like, um, meeting the goals I want to meet with you, you know, there should be room for me to live. Mm. You know, it is not, I'm not tied to you for life because we signed the contract. There should be room to live. And this is what I'm saying, like, people should be educated more, the laws should be enforced more, or create more laws that will help us sell to these things even more amicably, you know. Even among ourselves as musicians, if we cannot have an organization in Nigeria that we respect and give our power to as musicians that can come into uh, mediate this kind of issues, then what are we really saying? Well, we have P-Man. Yeah, but many people are not members. And P-Man doesn't, we've not given P-Man our power in that way that, you know, P-Man can call certain artists to order. You know, how many artists pay dues in P-Man? I mean, I, I'm not a member. Okay. I, I've never even filled the form to be a member of P-Man. You know, uh, there's Koson also, we're supposed yeah. to protect, do the, and all these organizations, what, what happens? There's everybody's complaining, oh, money is missing here, this is happening there. Remember the whole Charlie Boy saga mm -hmm. when he was the chairman of P-Man, a uh, president of P-Man? So these kind of things, young musicians like me lose faith, you know, and we sign to be members of different organizations everywhere else in the world except at home. But this is also what I'm saying. This is the opportunity for us to come, come together and take 
that kind of step forward where we, if we're not satisfied with what is existing, we create something that we, mm -hmm. you know, uh, give our power to. And we must understand that musicians cannot run these organizations. We must give them to professionals to run them, you know. So, I'd like to talk about the issues of um, royalty payments. In Nigeria, well, how, many, how much has TVC paid the Nigerian artists when they play their video? Let's start from there. <laughs> If you want to talk about well, we have collecting societies, uh, <coughs> MCSN, Kosan, yes. and, and the likes. Do you guys uh, meet up your payment to them? That's the first thing. Uh, we, we do. Uh, you know, anything, I think the, the thing in Nigeria is, as I said, the laws are not enforced. That's just it. You know, you can have laws, as long as there's no willingness to enforce the law, people will always take advantage, you know, of, of that unwillingness of the state to enforce such laws, you know. Um, and I want to say again, you know, because we always give ourselves a bad rap in Nigeria all the time. I understand. But this is not a Nigerian thing. You know, royalty theft is not a Nigerian thing. Every great artist everywhere in the world has this issue with their mm -hmm. record companies, their publishers, you know. You know, you really have to be on your job because it's money. You know, people get tempted to take money. <laughs> so if you don't have your own people that are monitoring and doing your calculations and auditing your account steady, you might even have millions of dollars out there that you mm -hmm. don't even know that other people yeah. are taking. Yes. So yeah, royalties are, are basically, you know, the pension of every artist. As I say, me, I see my royalties as a pension. I try not to spend it all when they come. I try to keep them so that, you know, at the end of the day when I'm not working much, that's the account I'll look at, you know, but. <laughs> <laughs> and it feeds you, you know, you keep getting it even when you're not working. It's basically your pension, you know, so. Um, Having a system that um, is able to collate and distribute that effectively and righteously in this country is something that is very necessary. But okay. you find again, as I said, you know, corruption is inside. Mm. You know, the little ones that we have, you know, you see everybody complaining every time, dragging themselves to court. <laughs> the secret weapon is um, my eldest sister, Sister Yeni. You know, mm. she is the glue that holds the family together. She's Celebration was her idea. She's the and she's the visionary and the amount of work she puts in. Mm -hmm. So we have to give special credit to her. But then everybody put uh, kind of chips in, you know, to make make sure it happens. Um, my ex-in-law, but still in-law, uh, sister Funke also does a lot of work. I mean, cousin Dotun, cousin Nike, everybody put. Everybody helps out, you know, and she has a wonderful team. So I think that is really what makes it happen in the organization. It kicks off today, actually. We start at, with the pre-celebration event yes. at Moist Beach tonight. So come, you know, I will perform tonight as well. Maddie is performing. I think Odumo Du Black and a few people performing as well. Uh, Vector, yeah, DJ oh. Obi. It's a, it's a fun event tonight. And then from Monday is the Fela Debates. Yes. Which I always implore mostly all the people that... Uh, feel that they want to understand Nigeria better, to come through, ask questions, be a part of this symposium. That's on Monday, and then the performances at the Shrine and all the other venues on Tuesday. All right, this is your younger self on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're not that young, though. This is just like a <clears throat> couple of years. Couple of years. Yeah, but you know, mm. I don't age. I'm like a vampire. <laughs> you have to give us the blood you take. <laughs> it is not blood. It's a special concussion. But, okay. Ah, I don't think uh, you are not initiated. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, thank you very much for talking to us, Shinokuti, of course. Uh, very interesting interview. Thank you so oh, my much. My pleasure.